and I would like to welcome you, Mayor, uh, to go through all your accomplishments in your years on the City Council and in the Assembly, and now in the, your second term as Mayor would uh, take more time than we have here today. Uh, but this certainly has got to be on the top of the list of some of the greatest accomplishments you have made, along with uh, our supervisor, Dora Vargas, and Sharp to a list of hospital. Uh, we see so many governmental entities uh, take the ball on a big project like this and fumble it. And that has not occurred here in Chula Vista. And, and under the mayor's leadership, the supervisor's leadership, and Sharp Chula Vista Hospital's leadership, we have seen uh, that, in fact, government done correctly can dramatically affect people's lives. And in this case, it is actually saving people's lives. And with that, uh, Mayor Casilla Salas, thank you for joining us. And we would welcome your thoughts and comments on our new vaccination super center. Yeah, well, thank you very much, John, but it's not my accomplishment. Um, I really have to uh, give the credit to our wonderful staff in Chula Vista and everything that they're doing to um, help fight this, this terrible crisis that we find ourselves in and the remarkable work that they've been doing and the shifting of, of um, you know, duties and, and the flexibility of just being on the front lines. Um, you know, our emergency operations center uh, headed by Marlon King, it's just remarkable. Our firefighters, our police officers, our library staff and our rec staff that has really taken a direct, a direct role in trying to assist our community. I, I'd like to, you know, thank our partnership um, with the county and um, with Sharp Hospital. It's, it's really remarkable what our staff has been able to do. Um, in, in answering the, the access question and the inability for people to, to um, get on through the internet, um, our library staff now is signing up people for the vaccine. And to date, we have, uh, we have enabled over 300 people to get appointments. So we're very proud of that accomplishment. Also, uh, in order to access uh, those communities that will find it very difficult to get to vaccine sites, as many as of you know, is that we've taken our ambulance service in-house. So we are in the process right now of outfitting those brand new ambulances and our uh, firefighters and EMTs are going to go out into the community to seek those that need the vaccine. So we were, will be targeting areas like mobile home parks um, that generally have very low income people um, that and seniors that don't have uh, a good internet access. We know where the affordable housing apartments are. So we'll be <clears throat> targeting those areas that we know that people will need help with getting their vaccines. <clears throat> so, you know, that's, that's really something that, that we're um, uh, working quickly on to, to, to uh, meet the demands of the moment. But as was mentioned by the Sharp people and by Nora, uh, Supervisor Vargas, it's a question of supply and demand and, and so um, uh, it, has, it has troubled me to learn that um, a lot of our people are not getting vaccinated in our super site. And then others that are more savvy or more connected from other areas of the county are coming down to get vaccinated. Now, it's not a matter of, you know, who gets, you know, uh, favoring one demographic over another, but we certainly would prefer to see that um, those people in our area and our South Bay region um, have first shot at getting those vaccinations. Um, you know, um, so far, um, you know, at at our at our um, at our testing center, we've tested over thirty seven thousand people. So that's remarkable. Um, but we know that there are so many others that need to be tested and need to be. Um, serviced and getting their vaccines. Um, we're all looking forward to the day where the vaccine supply will loosen and um, other tiers will be able to, to get their vaccines. We know that um, before people go to, to go back to school, that it's going to be imperative for our teachers to get vac vaccinated. Um, we're still waiting for our police officers to get vaccinated 
And um, they're on the front line every day. They're giving CPR every day to people that have been infected with the virus. And um, so, you know, they, they also need the, the protection of the vaccine as well. We know it's a matter of supply and demand. And I know that our supervisor, Nora Vargas, is working so hard to try to make sure that um, everyone has uh, fair and equal access to, to the vaccine. Well, thank, thank you very uh, much, uh, Mayor. And uh, I know if you have any questions for me, I'll be happy to answer them. Yes. And before we take questions, I know there's a very talented staff at the city of Chula Vista, um, as well as in the county. But without the kind of leadership you provide and Supervisor Vargas uh, has provided, we wouldn't have gotten this attention on the South Bay. And to your credit and to Supervisor Vargas's credit, you pushed this issue very hard. You entered into a partnership uh, with an entity that is extremely capable. And I know that there are issues uh, to be addressed. But again, uh, thank both you, Supervisor Vargas and Sharp. Um, this is off to a great start and we will continue to make improvements. And if there's anything South County EDC can do, by all means, please let us know. Uh, do we have any questions for the mayor? And I, well, first of all, before the questions, I forgot a very important partner in all of this, and that's the Chula Vista Center and, and Brookfield Properties, which manages the center and the Sears site. So um, for being so generous in offering that site for us, not, not only for testing, but for the vaccines. They came to us and they said, we're available. And so that created an opportunity for us because when Sharp asked us to become a partner in distributing vaccines and asked for a site, we said, we have an ideal one and that's a Sears building. So thank you to, to the property owners as well. So we do have uh, a little bit of time for uh, a question or two before we uh, move on with the agenda. Um, if anybody has a question for the mayor, please speak up. I have a question. Uh, Ma Good morning, Mayor Salas. This is Patty Alvarez from Televisa. Do you have a plan as to when uh, the majority of the working population will get the vaccine. When do you think these will be like, uh, we will reach 70%? Yeah. yeah. So again, that depends on uh, the supply. And um, the County of San Diego will be managing, um, releasing the, the particular tiers. And, and I know that right now what they're doing is they're following the, the federal and the state guidelines as to who gets a vaccine and, and um, you know, who and when they get the vaccine. So that really is a question that's more appropriate for Supervisor Vargas. Please, uh, Supervisor. Uh, I wish I had all the answers for these great questions. Uh, so the, I think the simple answer is that we are following the guidelines from the, uh, the federal and the state, but let's be real. Uh, the guidelines keep changing on a daily basis. I mean, I think all of you saw the chaos that occurred when, you know, it was only 75 and older, and then all of a sudden the next day it was 65 and older. And I think, you know, government um, doesn't know how to do this well, to be honest. Um, so I think what we're doing is trying to transition as quickly as we can when this happens. Um, I will say to you that um, my biggest concern with the changes is that there's still folks um, from the health, of, you know, the, the first tier that haven't gotten their vaccine. Um, some people are, are now in that phase where they're going to need their second vaccine. And so we are really pushing the federal government uh, for more vaccines right now and the governor uh, for you know, with the governor, we're working really hard to make sure that it's one voice, right? So I think yesterday there was some recommendations that teachers may be open, and I'm getting a lot of texts from people saying, "Hey, you know, these these folks need it, and these other folks are on it." And, and I and I know reporters and police officers, and you know, my staff, everybody, we're like on the front lines doing this work. But the truth is, is that if we the guidelines, it'll be um, chaotic for everyone. So. I think the most important thing is uh, I think that we can do right now 
I would say is let's talk to our communities about why the vaccine matters um, and why people should be getting the vaccine when their turn comes. Because a lot of people um, still are, there's a lot of misinformation and myths about the vaccine. And so if we can really also push that. So I know, Patricia, that I didn't answer your question directly because I can't tell you everybody's going to be vaccinated by July. I wish I could, but but I think what I want to be, what I want to do is yes, open and transparent and telling you that uh, we're going to keep fighting for additional uh, vaccines to our communities right now. And you'll hear this tomorrow during our mm-hmm. press conference that we do every Wednesday. You're all welcome to listen to uh, to the updates. There's data and a lot of information Wednesdays at uh, 2.30 with, with the county. Um, is that right now we have vaccines up until Thursday. So, you know, we're, we're going to keep pushing and, and getting them and we're going to keep opening the infrastructure so as the vaccines are coming, we're able to get them to our community. Thank you very much. Uh, Excuse me, I saw a question uh, maybe for Dr. Huynh, um, and it's that when you go to the, make an appointment on the website, the South Bay Center, is it says it's only open for phase 1A and not for everyone 65 and older. Uh, now, I know if you're 65 and older, you can uh, uh, get an appointment. Um, any, any comment on that, Dr. Huynh, if you're with us? Which, super, which center is that? Because uh, we can go back and check on it. My staff can check on it today. Okay. It, it's, it, the question was about the South Bay Center. Um, yeah, I can give you reassurance that our South Bay Center is 65 and older. I saw a question there about educators. Educators are not um, uh, part of that tier yet. Um, and then to uh, add to the uh, comment about when do we think we'll be vaccinated? Everyone, I think we look at the rate of how many people we're vaccinating right now. So we're vaccinating about 13,000 people a day. Uh, we all of our centers, I, not all, but I would say a lot of our centers definitely have the capacity to double to triple. And so to get to 25,000 would be uh, reasonable a day and kind of work your, work the number backwards from there, looking at our general population in the San Diego, San Diego County area. Um, again, it just comes down to supply. If, if tomorrow I was able to get a, you know, a million vaccines, I'm pretty sure that I would uh, turn on the spigot full, full force and, and have as many people as possible come in and, and get vaccinated. But um, uh, so right now we're currently vaccinating at the county, 13,000 people at least. A day. Doctor, how, how do you hear about the availability of the vaccine and how much are you going to get? Is it a is it a daily phenomena or is it ad hoc? Um, yeah, it, it's almost a weekly. Um, we, we look at our weekly okay. allocation and we project out from the week. And then um, sometimes uh, as manufacturers or suppliers um, open up new things, for example, Johnson & Johnson released some data last week. And so... Uh, we are actively preparing for different manufacturers to be accessible. So right now you've heard of Moderna and Pfizer. Uh, primarily at our vaccine center, we're only doing Moderna. But um, as those other manufacturers uh, get emergency use authorization, uh, we'll start to have them um, ac- uh, access to those vaccines as well. I think uh, our mentality is there's a place for a vac- there's a place for all those vaccines somewhere. I know that people are. Uh, prefer different vaccines by the end of the day, they're very highly effective. We forget that the FDA benchmark sometimes is, is 50%. Historically, our flu vaccines have been anywhere from 35 to 60% effective, and we've got these vaccines that are 95% effective. And, and uh, you know, we look at Johnson & Johnson, and those are still promising da- data. So all in all, like, we have you know, at least three major suppliers coming in in the next week or so. So um, that should also help with supply limitations as well. I will add that, um, so on Mondays, we know how much we're gonna have for the week. Um, and I think what's really important to to note is that vaccines are coming in different ways, right? So vaccines are coming to the county for distribution. And then there's also, you know, the, the military is getting their own. And then there's the CVS, uh, that whole other world that we can't figure out exactly how many they're getting. So. The problem is that there is no sort of one way that vaccines are coming to one place and they're all getting dispersed. There's, they're coming from different places and keeping track of that has been really what has been interesting. I will say that I'm really proud that uh, we our goal was to give out 250,000 vaccines in the county of San Diego in January. And I think we were able to, by January 28th, we had given out, I think, 260,000 vaccines or something like that. So it's a small number for the 3 million people that we have in the county. but um, but I think, you know, these partnerships are really helping us 
move along the process a little bit faster. Um, and so I, I like I like to share a little bit of good news as well as, as the process is moving forward. Well, thank you, everyone. I, I think we could probably spend the greater part of the morning talking about this. Um, it's very exciting that we have this super center. Um, it's very reassuring that Supervisor Vargas and Mayor Salas, the city and the county staff, um, has devoted time and energy to our region uh, to get the people vaccinated. And I want to thank you all for participating today and from hearing uh, from you all. And we would like to uh, invite you, Supervisor Vargas, to be part of our meeting next month to give us another update on how things are going. Uh, it's very reassuring to be able to hear straight from the, uh, the people with knowledge uh, about exactly what's going on.